Hey everyone, we're going to take a look at uh, the assembly for this clamp. So I'm going to go ahead and go up here to create, and I'm going to say new document, and I'm going to call this new document the clamp assembly, and I'm going to go ahead and say OK. Now it's going to load a new workspace as we get ready. And the one thing is, is we've got Part Studio down here. If you've noticed, you got Part Studio 1, you got Assembly 1. I'm going to go ahead and right click on Part Studio 1 and go ahead and say Delete to delete the tab. We don't need the part environment any, in this file, we just need the assembly. Now I do need to right click on this, say Rename, and we'll call this Clamp Assembly. Okay, it'll also rename there in the browser. To get us started, we need to bring in our first part. So I'm going to click on Insert. I'm going to choose Other Documents, My, uh, my On Shape, and I'm going to choose the folder that I'm working out of, the Clamp Assembly folder. Let's go ahead and shoot, bring in the base. When I select the base under Other Documents, uh, I do need to click on the very top level part that shows up in the listing. So I'm going to choose it, and now it's going to allow me to bring this in. As far as having it grounded at the origin, like we would in Inventor, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of click on the um, origin, so not a real big deal. And I'm going to go ahead and click the green check mark to be done. I'm going to go ahead and put this in isometric view. Now this is not uh, grounded, so if you click and drag it'll still go through and move around. So I'm going to kind of place it very close to the origin, so there's not a ground uh, at the origin feature in on shape. But I'm going to right click on this part and I'm going to choose the word fix. So fix is the same thing, it's like a geometric constraint. Whenever you fix something, it means you're locking it in the place. And then, you know, it's just like ground. It does the exact same thing as what we would do if we were using Inventor. So I'm going to go ahead and click Fix. Now if I try to click and drag on this part, it doesn't go through. It actually has a little symbol. That symbol shows up here, which says the part is fixed. Now that that's done, here's the thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start bringing in some other parts. So I'm going to start with uh, the lever next. Now before we get going into there, I want to show you we're going to be using something known as mates. So mates is a term... Uh, that you know, I know we we use the mate uh, assembly constraint, but a, but mate is kind of a generic term where they go through and do anything. So a fasten mate is kind of like locking it in in Fusion 360, which is what we're probably going to move to in future years for Project Lead the Way. They use joints. So in joints, they're the effect they're exactly named the same thing. So you got a fasten mate uh, in Fusion 360. It's called rigid. We got a revolute, which is a spinning or revolution. You got a slider mate, which is just slides uh, parts th back and forth. You got a planar mate, which if you look at the icon, it means it moves in X and Y directions. You got a cylindrical mate, which means it spins and it slides up and down. You got a pin slot mate, which means it stays within a slot. You got a ball mate, uh, which is like a ball joint, a parallel mate, and a tangent mate. So, and then that's the last one. So we're going to be using these to create our um, our assembly. So I'm going to go ahead and click insert. I'm going to choose other documents, go into the on shape folder, choose the clamp assembly folder, and then choose my lever part. Click on the top level to bring it in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and zoom out of here a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and uh, click to place it where I want it, and I'm going to hit the green check mark. Now I'm not going to bring in all the other parts just because I'm trying to make sure uh, for this one there's not too much on the screen as you do that. Now this does need to be rotated around a little bit. And what we're going to end up seeing here is if you click on the part, you actually get this little triad. So the little triad allows you to either slide this up and down on the Y axis or the X axis or the Z axis. But really what I need to do is I'm going to grab this little grip. This is going to allow us to rotate it. So if I click on that and grab, I'm able to rotate this around. And I need to rotate this around 180 degrees. So I can actually just type that in and hit enter. And that will go through and do that. And when I'm done, I just click off in the white space or I can right click. Um, or I can hit escape on my keyboard. Okay, just kind of do that. So this clamp, it's a good idea to go always go through, depending on how you have parts, uh, to go through and go ahead and put them together uh, based upon what orientation they should be in. Okay, let's go ahead and start off. We're going to do a revolute mate as our first one. So this means that this lever should be able to rotate back and forth. And this has a little cylinder there. 
and then that cylinder is going to be going right in that hole. Now the one thing is is that if you look, as I hover over, I'm going to zoom in on the side of this lever, is I've got little dots along here and my mouse keeps kind of snapping to those little dots. And what those are is they call those joint origins, or in this case they call them a mate connector. So um, the joint or the mate connector allows us to go through and choose specific points on a part to be able to make it do that. It's actually a little bit quicker than assembly constraints is what I've come to find out. But as I take a look, I'm gonna kind of use my right mouse button to rotate this around. And as I take a look, um, if I look at my part here, actually let me spin this around so that way we can see it from the, from the back. It'll kind of help that out a little bit. If I'm on the cylinder on the inside, I get three little mate connectors. And when I do that, so I get one on the inside there, I get one right in the middle, and I got one right there on the other side. So these are just points that the parts got picked up in on shape. So I'm going to choose the center of the cylinder. So that joint connector gets done. I'm going to rotate this around here a little bit more. Actually, I'm going to go right back over to the regular um, assembly kind of view. And then I'm going to hover over the inside of this hole and I get those three little connectors again. Now to make those match I want to use the one in the middle. So when I click it's going to go through and it's going to move those in. That's the exact placement that we want for this clamp. And I'm going to hit the green check mark. I'm going to hit the X to stop because otherwise it's going to allow us to keep adding revolutions. And here's kind of the effect. I'll put this into isometric view. Is with one, or actually two clicks, one particular joint or mate connector we assembled this lever right to the clamp base without having to go through. Whereas in a lot of cases with Inventor, we would probably would have had to do three uh, assembly constraints. So this has already got it already put in there, and we got realistic motion just based on that. So that's kind of just some of the stuff we're going to be doing in a series of videos. I'm going to show you to put this clamp together, and then you're going to try out an assembly on your own. So that way I can kind of see uh, whether or not you're you're getting the grasp with things. So take a look at the next video. We'll add a new part in and we're going to add a new mate connector um, into our kind of toolbox so then that way we know how to use them.